Kia ora everyone, it is me, the Moon, and I'm here to tell you a secret. Did you know that I'm a Ben 10 fan? <gasps> I know, hard to ever know that, right? But as a Ben 10 fan, I am confident in saying we all know the struggles with this show. The world, concepts, and designs are often amazing, bringing forth such a creative space built up by the creators, artists, and writers of this series. It's encouraged us fans to be just as creative. But that doesn't mean it doesn't come without flaws. Now, I would like to state that I do enjoy this series. There are a lot of wonderful things about it, and a lot of what I often say is out of love for this show. But as a mostly stable person, I am also willing to admit when something I like has its problems and boy does this show have its problems. For those who mostly follow me on Tumblr know that I have been trying to rewrite the series to try and piece it together in a more structural way, wanting to use elements of all versions of the series to try and bring my own potential towards it. So this is all out of love, and I can promise you that. So today I decided to try and make a more semi-professional video on me redesigning Ben 10 characters and suggesting ways I would handle them as a character as I do so. Today I will be handling the collective group of main characters for all three series. Ben, Gwen, Kevin, Rook, and Grandpa Max. So, without further ado, I present to you my own version of the Alien Force crew. And of course, first up on the redesigning list is the Omnitrix host himself, Ben Tennyson. And he is quite the character to try and break down. Anyone familiar with the show already knows that there is a lot of complaints about him, even if we still love the train wreck at the end of the day. Ben suffers a lot from the issue of the series not really wanting him to grow up, doomed to be in a cycle of relearning lessons and juggling what kind of character he wants to be. Whether that be a 10 year old kid having fun, someone trying to be a serious leader, or a very questionable individual that makes us pause from time to time. I've always found Ben to be rather fascinating. I like the idea of a flawed type of hero. One who means well, but at the end of the day is still just a kid with a lot of power on their shoulders. And I still want to keep that aspect of him, allowing him to be flawed, but not unbearably so. Ben is playful, has a bit of an ego, and has some destructive habits when it comes to commitments, but he's also empathetic, resourceful, and sees the value in every alien he has. He wants to be a hero because he truly cares about people, it's just sometimes fun to get rewards out of it here and there. After all, Kid Ben always struck me as the kind of child that was kinda lonely. Many times when we saw him at school, no one really wanted to talk to him, or even be his friend. Heck, we know one of his friends abandoned him to join his bully. So I like to write Kid Ben as being an attention seeker due to feeling left out. It also contributed to his rivalry with Gwen, seeing her as the better of the two of them deep down even if he'd never admit it. Getting the watch was the first time in Ben's life he really felt like he could finally be something. So the rewrite of Ben, I wanted to keep him as a complicated figure. A hero, but also a young boy, resulting in conflicting moments during his work. As for his design, I wanted him to reflect his original self and Alien Force self, but with my own elements. For Kid Ben's shirt, I tried thinking what kids back in the early 2000s would wear since I don't know if Ben's original shirt was supposed to represent something. I figured why not make it a reference to sumo slammers since I remember a lot of kids back then wearing t-shirts that plastered logos or icons from shows we watched at the time. But then I realized sumo slammers doesn't really have a logo of sorts or some kind of icon I could use that wasn't just a dude's face. So I ended up just grabbing the ears off of a box we see and saying that the outfit is supposed to be modelled after a character's shirt from the show. Maybe like Ishiyama's sidekick or something. For older Ben, I gave him a similar jacket, just tweaked it a bit. I did have the idea though that his jacket was a gift from his soccer team, who stitched on the 10 patch to reference his number on the team. I also tried to make 15 year old Ben look younger since his original self looked like he was about 18 at the very least. As for his appearances in Ultimate Alien Omniverse, I'll probably do designs for those eventually, but just wanted to stick to one kid version and one teen version for now. But here is my redesign of Ben Tennyson.
Now we move on to the next cousin, Gwen Tennyson. I always felt like she was a solid character in the show, smart, clever, with her own powers with the use of magic. But Gwen's biggest problem to me was that she never really had her own arc to follow. She had moments such as when Verdona came and told her the truth about Anodites, or wanting to help Kevin when he got mutated, twice. But unlike Ben and Kevin, I feel like Gwen didn't have a long running story we could follow for her. So what kind of story would I pitch to be her running arc? Well, I like the idea you could focus more on her alien side, with the concept that she is conflicted by it. Gwen loves Earth and in the end made it her choice to stay. But living on Earth can be complicated when you know so much about the outer world, especially when you're an alien yourself. She tries so hard to be one way that it can be hard on her to change. Very strict on herself, which causes a lot of stress on her. She has to learn to mellow out, which she gets help with through Ben, Kevin, Max, and even Rook. Speaking of Kevin, I wanted to showcase more of their opposite natures from the start, with Gwen looking overly tidy and Kevin looks like someone who's about to mug you. Match made in heaven. Their relationship would take more time to develop as well, instead of happening in the course of one episode. Gwen being the most willing to help Kevin, but still keeps her guard up around him. Eventually the pair start having mutual attraction to each other. I like the idea it starts off with Gwen freaking out about the crush and Kevin being all confident about it, but the moment they try and make it serious, suddenly Gwen has handle on things and Kevin doesn't know the first thing about committed relationships. And over time you would see the pair influence each other, with Gwen getting a more casual look and Kevin cleaning himself up, but both retain their own qualities. For Gwen's younger design, I mostly changed her outfit up slightly, but also giving her a headband and a pretty necklace, since that seems like her kind of style. Older Gwen, I wasn't a fan of the idea her outfit just being her school uniform and canon, but I wanted to keep the kind of style to not be her actual uniform, but to showcase how hard she tries to look serious and mature for her age, trying a bit too hard to impress. Though I did add this little detail, which is a tiny pin on her skirt, her lucky girl symbol. It was a gift from Ben when seeing her stressing out over schoolwork, a pen of luck as he would call it. It wasn't a charm of Bazel, but it still helped her a lot. Also, I kept her magic blue. Because blue is the best. And now we have the roller coaster plot driven man himself, Kevin Levin. If anyone thought Ben had a hard time with the writers, then they obviously haven't met Kevin. He can't even stop changing his backstory. So I will just lay it out. I am keeping him an alien, Osmosians a canon, and Agrigor is just a nop job for other reasons. Though I'm still going to give Kevin a hard time with his story, so you don't need to worry about that. His family history is a mess though. His father Devon was a plumber who met his mother Quinn on Earth during a mission. Right after Kevin was born, Devon was supposed to retire and become a full-time family man, but was pulled away to one final mission that he died on, leaving Quinn a single mother to raise her alien baby, which was not easy. This all eventually led to Kevin eventually running away and having issues towards Earth. A running story I want to have with Kevin is his lack of care towards the planet he was born on, because he never fit in, finding his footing out in space and finding it way more fun out there. Why would he ever want to go back to the place that ruined him, though that might just be him misplacing his anger. I still want to keep Kevin's villain and redemption arc, but allow it to be paced out better, a bridge that doesn't feel so sudden. So he's less of a monster by the end of the original series, but still not a great person during the start of Alien Force? The member of the team who's seen a lot by the time he's 16, and knows a lot of how the world works already, even if others may disagree with him. With his design, I wanted his kid self to look like that kind of person who bullied other kids on the playground, but when looking closely you can tell he's not doing the best. Torn clothes, patchwork done to his shirt that's been falling apart for a while, a jacket that doesn't look like it actually keeps him warm, a true street gremlin. Meanwhile, older Kevin hit the growth spurt early, looking more like he's almost 19 than 16. This is mostly in reference to how we all knew that one kid in school who came back after the holidays and hit puberty all at once. You know what I'm talking about. 
His clothes are also pretty ragged, along with his general appearance. I wanted to lean into the idea that when Gwen and Ben meet him again, they presume he dresses this way on purpose to look tough and edgy. But eventually learn that Kevin is actually really bad with his money when it comes to self-care. He'll put it all towards his car and other investments rather than better clothes for himself. Thankfully, over time, the influence of his new friends help him to learn to take better care of himself, even if he keeps aspects of the aesthetic over time. And here we have the best part of Omniverse, Rook Blanco. I didn't change much with him as he's a solid character and design, but that doesn't mean I couldn't tweak some things. Rook is interesting in that he did have a couple of running character arcs, whether that be with his family, sticking too close to the rulebook, or his original issues with Ben back when the two didn't entirely get along. But I always felt like some of these just fizzled out or weren't as prominent as they should be. This might be because Omniverse had a lot more scattered episodes and fillers, but I think if you slightly adjust Rook stuff, it could be quite entertaining. I have a couple of more episodes about his homeworld or family, including with his mother or the two other sisters we barely got to know much about. I'd even kill for some more episodes with his girlfriend, because it's honestly really cute he's already in a relationship with someone, which makes sense, it's Rook. I would have been surprised if this man didn't already have a date. If I were to throw something else in there, I think it would be fun to have a much later arc where Max hints to Rook that someday he wants him to take his place, which I imagine Rook would feel honored by, but perhaps quite nervous about. Indicating that maybe Rook never really thought about how far he was gonna go within the job, as he was happy enough being told what to do. I think what I'm really asking here for is more Rook. For his design, I wanted to keep the proto-armor style, but fuse it with the original plumber outfit, given that it's supposed to be the next step for plumber gear. I wanted to make that more clear. I also made Rook a little bit more limber, but kept his odd proportions, such as his wide elbows and knee regions, just translated into my style. Also, regarding his age, I am making him roughly two years older than Ben, who is about 17 by the time of Omniverse, making Rook 19 because I need to let these characters age instead of sitting in the void. But let us move on to our final member of the day. I couldn't forget about good old Grandpa Max, the rock throughout the series. He ended up being interesting to translate into my style, but in terms of his story and character, I had a few things to work with. Now, the series has always been wayward on how they want to handle Max's age. Some episodes where he could barely run a few feet, and other episodes where he could tank strikes from God himself. So I'd like to aim for a middle ground. He's not helpless, but he is at an age where he has to be more careful. So he relies more on plumber tech to help him, often using guns to keep a safe distance if he can. Though by the time of Omniverse, he's most likely considering he'll have to properly retire soon. He knows there's only so much he can do and should enjoy a more peaceful life eventually, which admittedly he's been trying to do, what with the RV lifestyle, but everyone has a way of dragging him back in. Hopefully with his guidance through Ben, they won't need him forever. Also, by the time of Alien Force, he will be living with Xylene and the Rust Bucket. I like the idea that he can move on from Verdona, understanding perfectly well that his ex-wife can't stay in one place forever, and the two still being on good terms. But damn, let Max be happy and live with the beautiful lizard woman. I even changed Xylene's lifespan so they could grow old together, even if they both have issues walking away from work. For his new look, I wanted to have fun with it, mostly just adding onto his original look. Kept his Hawaiian shirt, of course, but I added a fishing cap, vest, and nice wristwatch to add to the vibe. He's a granddad, really looking forward to the road trip. I took elements from the reboot and the Race Against Time Max to sort of honor those two, and I kind of like their vibe in a way, but it is kind of an illusion in some ways. Originally, he says the vest and the cap he got from an old fishing club of his, when really he's never had the time to join one before. Instead, he bought these from a store before picking up Gwen and Ben. 
Meanwhile, the watch is something his sons gave to him years ago, but he never wore it due to not being suited for work. But with him now wanting to make up for time, he's wearing it as a sort of apology to his sons. With each series, I imagine him wearing different items and articles of clothing, indicating how he's like trying new things outside of work, but also shifting around a lot, struggling to settle. He's just trying to enjoy life. <laughs> And that is the entire crew. I had a fun time recreating them for my own ideas while still trying to respect the original concept. I hope you all enjoyed my drawings today. I'll be posting the proper renders on my socials, which you can find down below. So please check them out and support me if you can. It means a lot. The next redesign video will be focusing on another group of heroes, a squad of alien kids we all know and love. Please leave a like and a comment and I shall see you all next time.